Now, in the future, very near future, this is what you are going to do. What is this image telling me? It is telling me that you start collecting data from the patient. Just like collecting data from the book. Khabbi telephone or something. You start writing data from the patient. At this moment, you collect data from your book. <coughs> then <coughs> doctors think about the data they collected. They think about what the patient told them. You should think about what the book told you about what the mind map told you, about what the lecture told you. <clears throat> you have to. You have no choice. You have to think. If you don't think, it is up to you. The medical knowledge is yours. The, your practice is yours. It's up to you. You choose. Doctors, after they collect data and they think about it, they share it with their colleagues. They say, okay, this is the information I got from the patient. You see this, you see that. They consult each other. You don't do this, but you have to do it. This is what we are going to do in the future. Then you share it with senior person. You discuss with a senior person. And it is a team. Different age group. Young and middle-aged and old. This is it. This is what you are going to do in the future. <coughs> now, how clever are you in doing it depends on <clears throat> how great doctor you are. Then you write the treatment, and then you have to discuss the problem with the patient. Can you make it simple and tell the patient this is another skill and it needs reading books. Okay, lots of books. This is our target, smile on the face of the patient. So be calm, be calm, study well, study smart, you will become a doctor, right? This is medicine. This is what we are going to see in the future. <clears throat> now we have studied the peritoneum, the peritoneal cavity, its compartments, recesses, which are very important pieces of knowledge. Right. <clears throat> These are the parts of the gastrointestinal tract, the tube that are present in the abdominal cavity. <clears throat> this is prior knowledge. You know that. This, this, the lowest part of the esophagus, stomach, 
small intestine, large intestine. Okay, this is prior knowledge. <clears throat> now, prior knowledge was well studied and well understood and it shines. Let's see a taste of the future, meaning applying this knowledge in treating people. You have been studying figures, drawings, colored and labeled. And thank you, drawings. We learned a lot. And it is by for now. In the real world, no colors, no labels. The simplest thing is CT scan, which represents the future, represents the real world. We study CT scans in sections. We will put <coughs> models in the lab representing sections. So you have to go into details of these sections. This image is telling me that this colored structure, the posterior mediastinum, to the left of vertebral column and to the right of descending thoracic aorta is the esophagus. The abdominal part of the esophagus is, is very short in comparison to the thoracic part. Here is what's called a barium swallow. That means the patient swallows a thick solution, swallows it and immediately take chest x-ray. And you see in this area, the line, the horizontal line is the diaphragm and the small part joining the stomach is the abdominal part of the esophagus. This is the abdominal part of the esophagus. The white J-shaped structure is stomach. <clears throat> this is a cross-section showing a, a CT scan. This is the liver, this is the heart, this is the stomach. And this tube is the esophagus. Nice outline, okay. It is showing something that is written in the book. It says it's collapsible structure. And <clears throat> the esophagus is not open like the trachea. Trachea is always open. The esophagus is collapsed. And the peristalsis is the thing that is going to push food down. So it is collapsible. This is also a CT scan and it is easy. This is posterior because of the vertebra. This is anterior. A large structure, a very large structure on the right is liver. The structure that is filled with solution is the stomach. This place is full of air because it is the fundus. And this is the spleen. It is to the left of the stomach posterior and slightly lateral, okay? Everything is normal, all lines are <coughs> smooth. This is the place of the esophagus joining the stomach. Again, same structures, liver, stomach, spleen, and we come here and we can see that 
is the place of the esophagus joining the stomach. Gastroesophageal junction. <clears throat> In this cadaver, we want to see the place where the esophagus gets in the abdominal cavity. You can see that this structure, which is called the right crust of the diaphragm, goes up and turns to the left surrounding the esophagus. One of the factors controlling what passes through the esophagus into the stomach. Esophageal hiatus. It's at the level of T10. This is the end of gastro gastroscopy of the esophagus and this is the lumen of the esophagus. Okay. Now, when we push gas into the endoscopy to open the esophagus, this is what we see because it becomes dilated and the folds are ironed out. This is some saliva. And then we start to see because of the stomach. The mucous membrane of the esophagus suddenly changes into mucosa of the, <clears throat> the stomach and it appears as a sharp line. Sometimes the mucosa of the stomach extends up into the esophagus and I'm sure the pathologist told you about something called Barrett's esophagus. Have they? Hmm? Uh, they gave you diseases of the esophagus. Did they talk about Barrett's esophagus? Okay. Did they show you an image? Okay. The esophagus in this image is coming down related to the arch of the aorta and this is the second constriction and then behind the heart and then perforate the diaphragm and it's a short course in the abdomen. This is the gastroesophageal junction. Uh, it should function well. If it doesn't, then will people have what's called reflux esophagitis. The gastric acid should not go up, right? should not go up the esophagus. What shares information of this functional connection, and I am not saying anatomical structures, I am saying functional. First of all, it's the angle, the angle of entry to the stomach. Secondly, there is fat around the lower end of the <coughs> esophagus. Then, how good the right crust of the liver is. Although in this drawing, it shows that the muscular part of the esophagus is thicker here, but there is no specific at the lower end of the esophagus, like the, paro the pyloric. Pyloric is very specific sphincter. Here there is no very specific sphincter. Now, this is the esophagus. And you can see the longitudinal folds. And this is the stomach. You can see that there is change of color and there is sudden change of type of mucosa and these are 
longitudinal folds and these are folds of the stomach they are called rugi now anatomical surface anatomy of gastric pain pain of the stomach is going to be in the epigastric region but it also radiates to the back where is the back between two scapulae why am I telling you this it's because in the future when you suspect gastritis or gastric pain you ask the patient where is your pain the patient is going <clears throat> to point to epigastrin your next question should be does it go to your back okay and if it's in the back is it in the upper back or in the lower back the patient does not know what is the scapula so this <clears throat> map of pain in the abdomen is very important <clears throat> it's the same pain of the stomach and the epigastrium radiating to the back between the two scapulae <clears throat> this is an old knowledge you need to activate what are the parts of the stomach fundus body, pyloric antrum and pyloric canal, greater and lesser curvatures and the cardia. This is also previous knowledge. You have to activate it. Now, this is previous knowledge, but this is a new skill. These two hands are examining what? The gastric region, then is it examining the fundus? No, the fundus is higher up under cover of the costal cartilage and the ribs. These hands are examining the what? Pyloric part of the stomach, the lower part of the stomach. This is the ziphoid, this is the costal margin, <clears throat> this is the costal margin, and this is the place where these hands are examining. This is the pyloric part of the stomach. The rest of the stomach is under cover of thoracic cage. Again, the hands are coming from above examining the pyloric part of the stomach this is an endoscope of the inside of the stomach where you can see the rugi okay they are nice and you see the outlines are are very artistic no problem again they are shiny and there is no disturbance in the pattern when you come here, in this situation, you can see that there is this spot here. This spot is, is not nice. It is disturbing the whole pattern. And this is the place of gastric ulcer. Now, this is a barium meal. The patient drinks a glass of thick secretion and the glass will not fill all the stomach but we have <clears throat> this is the fundus of the stomach usually filled with air we're going to see this even in uh, CT scans 
is the body, antrum of the pyloric area, greater curvature, lesser curvature. This is prior knowledge. We need to activate it. This is also prior knowledge on <clears throat> a dissected stomach, cardia, fundus, body, pyloric area, greater curvature and lesser curvature. This is opened up the stomach. This is the inside of the pyloric antrum. You can see the rugi and this is the definite inner circular muscles which, which make the pyloric sphincter. Therefore, if we take a section of the CT scan, we're going to see what? The liver. The liver here is reflected. When it comes back, we can see the liver, then we see stomach, then we see spleen. Liver, stomach, and spleen. This is the entry to the stomach through the esophagus, and this is the exit part of the stomach. This is the pyloric opening, <coughs> pyloric canal. It opens and closes. Physiologists will tell you about this. <clears throat> this image is telling me that when the patient takes barium, the barium will go down the wall of the stomach and here's a groove between, the, between two different rugies and these are the rugies. And you know what is this? This is incisura angularis, a constriction in the stomach, physiological one, which is present most of the time. Now, in this image, you can see that this is the pyloric canal, and the two arrows are pointing at the pyloric sphincter. The stomach opens into the duodenum, okay? Now the duodenum has four parts. The first part connected to the stomach has two components. This is called duodenal bulb. And then you can see that the appearance in the second inch is going to be different. This is the second inch of the duodenum. And then the duodenum starts to come down and it has its own feathery-like appearance of the mucosa. <clears throat> Here, everything is nice, but we can see that there is a, a pit that is filled with the barium. It shouldn't be there. This is gastric ulcer, crater of gastric ulcer. And this is the continuation of the stomach and this is the duodenum. Here we can see the stomach, then we can see the duodenal bulb connected to the stomach, which is after this constriction. And then this is making the first inch of the duodenum. The second inch is going to be different in the mucous membrane arrangement, and then it comes down as the second part of the duodenum, horizontal part of the duodenum, and the fourth part of the duodenum joining the jejunum. 
this arrow is showing you that the jejunum has wider lumen than the duodenum. It has the widest lumen because this is the place of absorption. Back to the future, this is a normal. That's the liver, right lobe of the liver. Then the left lobe of the liver crosses the midline, right? This is the real thing and covers the fundus. This is air in the fundus and here is no comment. على فكرة الامتحان تجي سيت سكان صوبس من هاي الامتحان. ف... deal with it. No comment. Okay. And this is the spleen. Now we know this arrangement, right? Because we saw in the image when we take a, a cross line. Here is the liver, stomach, and spleen. Now, this piece of information is easy. Here we can see structure curved and joins the lesser curvature of the stomach. So it is the left gastric artery. Here are structures between the spleen and the stomach the same consistency like this one, these are the short gastric arteries. We will be looking at blood supply later on. These arrows are the stomach, right? This constriction here is pyloric, sorry, the incisura angularis, the constant peristaltic wave that stops here. And here is the pyloric sphincter. Here we can see that <clears throat> there is a problem. The rugi are swollen and larger and more protruding into the lumen. Okay. And this is also a CT scan showing that the rugi are not straight. They are supposed to be straight. Here they are tortuous. So there is something wrong with with this stomach. Where are we? What is this? This is the liver, okay? <clears throat> what is this structure that contains bubble of air? It's the stubble, okay? Now, we use the piece of information that says fundus of the stomach is usually filled with air. Now, we know it and then we use it usable information and we can see that the stomach is extending towards the right so this is the beginning of the duodenum okay this is the left lobe of the liver it's the same consistency as this one this is the gallbladder and this is the duodenum coming down. <clears throat> of 
we go lower down, this is posterior, this is anterior, we analyze the situation. This is stomach filled with barium, here is a bubble of air. Then we see a circle full of barium, okay, to the right of the stomach. This must be the duodenum, okay. The descending part of the duodenum is not in this section, but I can see here at the tip of the arrow that there is another circle also filled with barium similar to this one. So this is the junction between the second which is going down and the third which will be horizontal. This is the gallbladder and this is the pancreas, large intestine. Again, this is the stomach, this is the duodenum, and then if we look at this image, this is the stomach, this is the liver, but if we follow up the wall of the stomach, we can see that when it comes here, it is thicker. Therefore, this is a disease stomach. This is a cadaver showing me that this is the stomach and this is the liver. This is the pyloric area of the stomach and this is the lesser omentum. It's two folds of peritoneum between lesser curvature of the stomach and the liver. Now we have talked about this in details. This is the greater omentum coming down from the greater curvature. The green line, interrupted line, indicating the greater curvature of the stomach. This is the lesser curvature. The stomach here in the cadaver is shrinked and this is the fundus by the pyloric area, pyloric sphincter. The structure between inside this circle is along the lesser curvature and it is a peritoneum, therefore this is the lesser omentum. And this <clears throat> fold of peritoneum coming from the greater curvature of the stomach is the greater omentum. This is the pyloric opening entering into the duodenum. Okay, this is prior knowledge about the rugi the layers of the abdominal wall. This subject will be addressed in a lecture in the future. Left gastric artery, right gastric artery, right gastroepiploic, left gastroepiploic, and short gastric. Probably you have taken this in your cardiovascular system. If we lift the stomach, we are going to see the splenic artery and the hepatic artery coming from the celiac. Do you know these arteries? Do you know them? Okay, so this is prior knowledge, but we will be talking about them later. These veins, they drain into the portal vein, which is very important. They follow the same names of arteries. Now, the nerve supply of the stomach is by the vagus. Stimulates the gastric secretion, the acidity. It's 
the left and right vagus. We care about lymph nodes in cases of cancer of the stomach. They are along the greater curvature and they are along the lesser curvature. And each group is named according to its position. Here is the beginning of the duodenum. This is descending part, horizontal part, and the fourth part. And here is the pancreas. At the very beginning or end of the fourth part, there is a ligament. This ligament is called ligament of treads. It's a band of connective tissue that connects very well the last end of the duodenum to the posterior abdominal wall. And then the duodenum will start. And this barrier meal is the pyloric sphincter. This is duodenal bulb, first inch, second inch, then descending part, horizontal part, and fourth part. This is prior knowledge showing you the different four parts of the duodenum. Pyloric antrum, this is pyloric sphincter, and you can see that the mucosa of the duodenum has circular folds called plica circularis. The, whole, the perpendicular part of the duodenum receives the connection between the common bile duct, pancreatic duct and they open into what's called duodenal papilla, bringing bile and pancreatic secretions. This is the head of the pancreas. <clears throat> when we see CT scans, the head of pancreas is always to the left of the duodenum. Simple, isn't it? Here, <clears throat> we're going to see that this is the first part of the denim, second part, third part, and fourth part. The genum starts after ligament of treats. Here is the attachment of mesocolon, and it goes all the way at the inferior border of the pancreas. And here is the attachment of small intestine at the tip of the head of the pancreas. So there is a relation between the colon and the duodenum. And we're going to see this in the CT scan. Here's the beginning of the duodenum descending part, horizontal part, fourth part, joining the duodenum. And the duodenum is related to the right, to what? To the hepatic flexure of the colon. We have just seen this. Duodenum is related to the hepatic flexure of now, why is this the colon? Because it is large, it contains air and some fe fecal material. This is the head of the, of the pancreas. And we have seen that the head of the pancreas is just to the left of the descending part of the duodenum. The endoscope of the duodenum shows me the Plica circularis, the circular folds. Now, into the duodenum opens the common bile duct, 
and the pancreatic duct uh, through duodenal papilla. These are images of the duodenal papilla. Okay. This is a, an endoscope of uh, an instrument that is passing into the duodenal papilla to pick up a stone. Endoscope, you go in, stomach, go to the duodenum, find the papilla, enter the papilla and pick up a stone and bring it up. And here's the stone taken out of the biliary passages. Again, first inch, duodenal bulb, these are parts of the duodenum. Here you can see the bulb only, the material has not filled it. And this constriction is pyloric canal with pyloric sphincter. In this CT scan, the, the structure that is C-shaped, okay, is the duodenum. It's not difficult to identify. Let's say here what we can see. Why is this stomach? Because it is to the, near the midline, to the left of the liver, and contains bubble of air. And here is the duodenum extended from the stomach. This is the common bile duct. Okay. This image is telling me that these are different parts of the liver. This is the stomach contains air of bubble, contains barium, and then there is this tube coming from anterior to posterior. So this is the second part of the duodenum. Okay, this is the pancreas. And we will carry on next lecture, thank you.